Welcome. We all like to talk about our winners, right? The stocks we picked that went up 200%, 300%, 500%, but we almost never talk about our losers. And today, I'm going to make an exception to that rule. I'm going to talk about Vale, a stock that has lost me a lot of money over the last nine months. And I'm going to take you through the process of why I bought the stock, what went wrong, why I'm selling, and what I might have learned from this process. Let me take you back to November of 2014. In November of 2014, I had a post on my blog called Go Where It's Darkest. And I looked at two companies, Vale and Lucol, where I argued that uncertainties were converging. In what sense? Commodity prices were down, risk had, commodity risk had increased. The countries in which these companies were incorporated, Brazil and Russia, were going through issues, issues that were increasing the risk. And finally, their currencies were imploding. The Brazilian Riyadh and Russian ruble were both under assault. I argued that the payoff to valuation would be greatest in an environment like this one because most investors would have fled the market. They weren't even trying. Using that logic, I valued Vale for the first time in November of 2014. And the value that I got, $19.40, which was much higher than the stock price, was premised on the following notion. I used the operating income from the trailing 12 months, which is about $12 billion, down from $19 billion the previous year as my base year number. Implicitly, I was assuming that it already incorporated the drop in iron ore prices. I incorporated the higher risk of the country into my cost of capital, and I valued the company. I wasn't particularly ambitious in my valuation. I assumed that Vale was a mature company growing at about 2% a year, and that its success returns would be relatively minor, but, re but reflect what the company had generated as returns over and above its cost of capital over the previous five years. So here you see the valuation of, of, of the company, for, of Vale, in November of 2014, reflecting these assumptions. And you see the numbers in red reflecting what I was worried about in November of 2014 with Vale. And I was worried about commodity risk continuing, corporate governance risk kicking in, and all of those things also showing up in my valuation. I bought Vale very publicly on my blog in November of 2014. I wish I could tell you. 10 months later, that the stock is up 50%, but it isn't. In fact, I made an intermediate stop in April of 2015 when the stock was already down about 30% from where I bought it. It was down to, to just over $6. So I revalued the company, and I revalued what I called a search for my serene self. As an investor, I don't want to be happy. I just want to be serene. I want to be okay with what's in my portfolio. So I fought through all those behavioral impulses we have when we have a losing stock, when we want to deny its existence, we want to look the other direction. And I decided to look at Vale again with fresh eyes in April of 2015. Now that's a little unlikely given that I already owned the stock. So I knew that I was going to have some biases kick into my valuation. But here's what I did. I updated my trailing 12-month numbers and they were down another third from what they were in November of 2014. I used those updated numbers as my base year earnings, assuming again that they reflected lower iron ore prices. I incorporated the higher risk that had come into the valuation because country risk had gone up. And there was another risk that was lurking in the background that had to be dealt with. Another Brazilian company, Petrobras, had gone into a tailspin, a dramatic tailspin, partly because it was a government-run company, not a government-owned company, but a government-run publicly traded company, where the, where the government interference had essentially pushed the company to the brink of ruin. And when I looked at Vale, I saw a lot of perils between Vale and Petrobras. So I worried about it being Petrobras, but notwithstanding these fears, I revalued the company. And even with my more pessimistic assumptions, and one of the assumptions I also made is those excess returns that I assumed in November of 2014, I assumed them aware. I assumed that the best case scenario for Vale might be that it earns its cost of capital. And with those assumption changes, the value that I had dropped from $19.40 to $10.71, but was still higher than my stock price. So in my April 2014 blog post, I concluded by saying that while I wasn't happy with what had happened with Vale, selling it in April of 2015 would not fix the mistake I'd make, made in November of 2014. And given its stock price in April of 2015, that I'd continue to hold the stock. Now, of course, it's about four months later. 
September of 2015, the stock is down further to $5.05. Iron ore prices have declined even more. But more critically, the country that has kept iron ore prices high for the last decade, China, has gone into a spiral this summer. What used to be Vale's strength, which is its dependence on China, has now become a weakness. Brazil continues to have its political troubles con and, and, the, and the troubles are worsening rather than becoming better. All of those things are kicking into my valuation. Finally, the bottom doesn't seem to be quite the bottom when it comes to earnings. The 12 billion, which became 8 billion, is now down to 2.5 billion. The company's earnings have fallen through the floor. Now, some of that reflects restructuring charges and one time charges that will probably go away. But I, in my updated valuation of, of Vale, I have brought the base year earnings down to 40% to of what they were over the last five years. Implicitly, I'm saying that the days of high iron ore prices are behind us, that we're reverting back to almost a pre-China level for iron ore prices, and that's going to bring the operating income down. I am going to bring up the risk in my, in my country risk component, my cost of capital. And that's going to push my cost of capital up for the company. And with those changes put in, and especially with the country risk factor kicking in, my value per share has dropped to $4.28. I have to tell you that a big chunk, almost 70% of the value drop, is because of the increase in country risk. And that country risk increase might be temporary, but it is showing. And here's the biggest giveaway. That value is now lower than the price. I have no intrinsic value basis left for holding the stock. I'll make a confession though. I was tempted to go tweak the valuation. If I'd replaced those earnings with slightly higher earnings, or I'd made the assumption that the country risk effect was a transitional effect that it would decrease and become smaller over time, I could very easily make Wale's value six and a half or seven dollars. But I know the dangers of opening that can of worms. So in this case, I'm selling Vale. Am I happy about the fact that I bought Vale in November of 2014? Are you kidding? Of course not. If I'd known then what I know now, I would not have bought Vale. But I did not know then what I know now. So that's almost a useless observation to make. I'm selling Vale, but I have no regrets. I have no regrets because I believe that I did all I could in November of 2014 with the information I had. I know some of you, even then, told me that I was missing the drop in, in iron ore prices and maybe I should have had a wider vision, but I did not. But here are the things I've learned from my Vale valuation. The first is, when you value a commodity company, you've got to be careful about making implicit assumptions about commodity price movements. When I use those last 12-month earnings for valuing Vale in November of 2014, April of 2015, I was implicitly making a pricing judgment about iron ore prices, and that judgment was wrong. The second, was, the second lesson I've learned deals with political risk. I've discovered in my dealings with political risk that it's sticky. Sticky in what sense? The rational solutions almost never get taken, and because it's political risk, it tends to linger and linger and linger because it's the best interest of some politicians to keep the risk going rather than remove it from the game. And the third and final factor that I have to bring in in the context of the Vale valuation is it illustrates the danger of investing in risky companies which have debt, and Vale has tons of it. Debt is a steroid when you're growing, so it helps you grow faster, but when you're in trouble, it makes your troubles even worse. And with Vale, I've discovered that through hard experience. But as I've said, I didn't know in November of 2014 what I know now. So I have no regrets because I did the best I could with the information I had. To those who feel the urge, I told you so, you deserve it. Go ahead and tell me, tell me that you were right. To those who followed my advice and actually bought Vale, I'm sorry. But that's why I don't give investment advice. I have learned from my Vale experience and I hope that I can use the Vale experience to become a better investor in the future. This is not the last mistake I will make. This is not the first mistake I've made. But I realize that the reason I have a risk premium when I invest in equities is I will always make mistakes and I have to be okay with it.